group strength and mortality. Does this highlight the importance of resistance training? Over the span of more than a decade, numerous papers have consistently highlighted a significant correlation between grip strength and longevity, essentially reflecting how long we live. To put it plainly, higher grip strength typically indicates a greater overall strength and, consequently, a potential longer life expectancy. Today, our focus of grip strength stems from its widespread use in both the research and clinical settings as a proxy measure for overall strength and for several compelling reasons. It's quick and easy to administer, and it's remarkably cost-effective. Since the inception of these seminal publications dating back to studies as early as 1999, health advocates and social media influencers have unfortunately extrapolated this research and frivolently championed these findings, praising the benefits of resistance training as an essential element for prolonging one's lifespan. They've since drawn a correlation between increases in muscular strength through resistance training and enhancements in grip strength, thus reinforcing the imperative of resistance training for longevity. However, can the solution truly be as straightforward as it seems? Or are there more complexities yet to be uncovered? If you thought, no, things can't be that simple, well then you're absolutely right. Let's begin with scrutinizing whether resistance training truly results in higher grip strengths. While the logic behind this proposition seems sound, the available research on this matter does not validate it. Current data fails to support the notion that resistance training correlates with an increase in grip strength. In fact, despite being assessed in numerous resistance training studies, grip strength shows a minimal to no enhancement even after years of dedicated training. An intriguing observation that I found worth noting is that many of these resistance training programs, as outlined in these studies, do not incorporate exercise that would sufficiently challenge grip strength, thereby hindering any substantial improvements. Further, these revelations described above underscore the inherent flaws in using grip strength as a proxy measure of overall muscular strength. How so, you might be wondering. While it's evident that individuals who regularly engage in resistance training do experience improvements in overall muscular strength, the same cannot be said for grip strength based on the available data. Therefore, we cannot draw the conclusion that grip strength simply being correlated with a health outcome highlights the importance of engaging in resistance training. In other words, the data which shows that having a higher grip strength is associated with lower all-cause mortality, for example, probably should not be used to promote resistance training. So what exactly does grip strength indicate? Well, in my perspective, it serves as a measure of an individual's robustness or resilience. Despite numerous factors positively associated with grip strength, such as our body mass, our height, and BMI, a study conducted by Rentanen et al. in 2000 revealed that grip strength assessed during the midlife in a healthy population predicted mortality rates over a 30-year follow-up period independently of BMI. These findings demonstrated that individuals in the lower tertiale of grip strength had a 20 to 39% increased risk of mortality regardless of their BMI. This suggests that the association between grip strength and mortality is not solely influenced by body size, highlighting the potential inherent benefits of being physically stronger. So what factors contribute to grip strength? Researchers assert that grip strength is influenced by not only genetic predispositions, but also our nutritional intake during critical developmental stages, including both prenatal and childhood nutrition. Insufficient or inadequate nutrition during these formative periods can result in hindered or impaired growth throughout childhood and adolescence, leading to diminished hand grip strength in adulthood. Furthermore, studies by Sayer et al. have indicated that higher birth weights correlate with better grip strength in later life for both men and women. Similarly, research by Ku et al. has explored the relationship between birth weight and adult grip strength at age 53, revealing that every extra kilogram of birth weight is associated with a 3 kilogram increase in grip strength for men and a 2 kilogram difference for women. So where can we make a meaningful impact? Despite the limited effectiveness of resistance training in enhancing our grip strength, there is evidence suggesting that interuterine nutrition and maternal health behaviors can play a role in influencing birth weight, thereby potentially affecting our grip strengths. Additionally, interventions aimed at optimizing a child's nutrition environment during early childhood development could serve as an opportunity to enhance baseline strength and prevent stunted growth. 
Furthermore, future research could delve into the impact of physical activity during the early childhood school years. For me, I'm personally hopeful that further investigations exploring the effects of changes in early life physical activity and nutrition on group strength, mortality rates, and other health biomarkers will shed some light on successful aging strategies. This avenue of research may offer our best chance at promoting healthy aging. So does this imply that resistance training is unnecessary? Well, let's be clear, the benefits of resistance training are vast and varied, extending far beyond the scope of this discussion. Just because the current data doesn't conclusively link resistance training to increases in life expectancy through improved group strength, doesn't mean that you should disregard or avoid resistance training altogether. On the contrary, research indicates that resistance training can significantly enhance our quality of life as we age. It fosters increased muscle mass, strength, flexibility, and balance, while also reducing the risk of chronic diseases like cardiovascular disease, osteoporosis, and metabolic disorders. So, if or when you encounter information online associating grip strength with resistance training, it's often the result of misinformed individuals seizing upon attention-grabbing conclusions to bolster their own viewpoints. Don't be swayed by their sensationalism. So guys, if you've enjoyed this video and like to see more content where I break down research and cut through the misinformation that exists in the fitness industry, be sure to like this video and subscribe to my YouTube channel and check out the links in the description below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video.